Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two as sword, MC heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware, didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there. Not getting down with your tactics, undoctrinal practice. Re Hello, everyone. Shalom, Barakatha. I greet you in the name of Ahaya, Bahashem, Yeshaya, Wawarak. Welcome again to the Crystal Jones Show. It's the show that's all about life's balance. I am your talk show host, Crystal Jones, and um, I have so much to share with you. Thank you for joining me today. Let me tell you about my, in my contact information. You can uh, reach me. Uh, you can watch me at the Crystal Jones Show um, on Saturdays from 7 to 8 p.m. on BronxNet.tv, channel 951 and 2137 on your cable channels. Um, on BronxNet, I'm on the Inspire channel. All right, so that's my new weekly air day and time is Saturdays from 7 to 8 p.m. BronxNet.tv. You can go online and watch it or you could watch it on your local cable channels, 951 2137. Also, you can also reach me at uh, the Crystal Jones Show TV show on Facebook and YouTube. Please go to my YouTube channel, join the channel, subscribe. Thank you all for subscribing. Some of you have been subscribing lately. Share it so other people can subscribe and they can share with the information that you're getting from this show and the learning and the things that we're, you know, people are excited. So um, like and share my videos. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and share my videos with others. Also, you can uh, see what I'm doing on Instagram. Um, you could always write to me at the Crystal Jones Show at Gmail. I'm also on Hebrew Connect T hebrewconnect.tv i forgot to put up that i'm also now on patreon as well all right so let's get into the news for today all right today's news is so much going on we're going to talk today a little bit about afghanistan uh that's a really sad situation that's unfolding like a horror show um it is really really sad that um you know, it winded up the way it did with, uh, after all these years of our people going over there and, and dying and all of that, all for like nothing, you know, so you can't force anything on people, you know what I'm saying? So now all of this has unfolded like a horror film and they want to blame it on one person. But um, you really can't even do that. It's just, I mean, I, you know, I may not agree with the approach that was being made to do it. But even still, um, with our people having back, you know, having to come out of that at some point, we would have had to come out of it. I may not have chose that way, but still, it that thing was going to be a horror, a horror story. I don't care how you did it. So it, and it's sad because, um, you know, lives are going to be lost and things like that. Hopefully our people will be able to get out of there. You know, it, it's just really, it's a mess. It's really, really a mess. And all of these things that are going on with wars and all of that kind of stuff, as Christ said, wars and rumors of wars would be happening. It's all because people, it's the greed the love of money, the love of drugs, the love of just power and not wanting to heed and obey the word of God. That's bottom line what it is. People want to do what they want to do. And it's across the board. It's all over the world. And all of this stuff is coming down. All right. So in the meantime, we're going to sit back and we're going to look at a video on the top black businesses, uh, we want to focus on black on Hebrew and black excellence. So we are going to focus on t ten of the top black businesses. Let's look at that video. Mm -hmm. 
African-American entrepreneurs own more than 2.6 million firms and are building some of the nation's brightest, innovating, and fastest growing companies. Black Enterprise publishes an annual list, BE100s, which ranks America's largest Black-owned companies, including automobile dealers, banks, asset managers, investment banks, and private equity firms. Black Enterprises List is universally recognized as the most authoritative analysis and annual ranking of the nation's highest earning black owned companies. And when and where you can, support black owned businesses because money equals power. And by supporting black owned businesses, African American consumers are exerting an enormous amount of power to develop black economic dominance, power to create new jobs within our community, and power to build generational black wealth. In this original Black XLS video, we will be featuring the top 10 businesses owned by African Americans. So without further ado, let's get started. 1. Worldwide Technology Inc. Coming in at the number one spot is Worldwide Technology. Worldwide Technology has an annual revenue estimated at more than $9 billion. It is a technology service provider founded in 1990 by David Stewart, based in Maryland Heights, Missouri. Worldwide Technology offers technology and supply chain solutions to federal government, state and local government, education, telecommunications, healthcare, retail, and utilities. They also serve oil and gas customers and suppliers worldwide. 2. Act One Group Companies with staffing, human resources, or business concerns turn to Janice Bryant Harroyd and Act One Group Company for their expertise. Harroyd leveraged a $900 loan from her mom to help build a consulting and business services firm with over $1 billion in annual revenue. In fact, Harroyd is the first African-American woman to operate a company that generates more than $1 billion in annual revenue. The North Carolina A&T State University graduate founded Act One, headquartered in Torrance, California, in 1978 and she is CEO of what is now the second highest revenue earning black owned company and the nation's largest woman and minority owned employment services company in the US. Three, Bridgewater Interiors LLC. Detroit company Bridgewater Interiors ranks number three on our list of black owned companies. It is an automotive seating manufacturing company specializing in just-in-time manufacturing, sequencing, and delivery of automotive parts such as seating, overhead, and central console systems. Since 1998, this Tier 1 supplier has supplied automotive manufacturers such as Ford and General Motors with some of the highest quality products in the industry. Bridgewater's interiors currently assemble seating systems across 15 distinct car models for major automotive manufacturers at three facilities in Michigan and one in Alabama. 4. Piston Group Piston Group designs, develops, manufactures, supplies, and exports automotive parts, systems, and assemblies. The fourth highest earning black owned company was founded in 1995 and is privately owned by former Detroit Piston basketball player and two time NBA champion Vinnie Johnson, who serves as CEO. Based in Redford, Michigan, Piston Group specializes in the areas of process engineering, design and development, advanced assembly and manufacturing, supply chain management, and product design and prototype testing. It also offers products and services for electric and hybrid vehicle battery systems. 5. Modular Assembly Innovations, LLC Modular Assemblies Innovations, located in Dublin, Ohio, is the parent corporation of a group of certified minority-owned companies offering manufacturing and assembly solutions to manufacturers. In addition to modular assembly, they also provide supply chain management and sequential parts delivery to the automotive industry. In 2011, Billy Victors established the privately held Modular Assembly Innovations, which is now the fifth highest earning black owned company in the US. Victors, who was once a star football player at North Carolina State University, now serves as president and chief operating officer. We would like to thank Hayden T. Joseph and Company. They are an international tax team who can help American entrepreneurs and business owners expand and operate internationally. In particular, Hayden T. Joseph & Company helps American business owners expand to Southeast Asia. Visit www.htj.tax or check out their link in the description box below. 6. Mana Inc. Founded by former NBA player Ulysses Bridgman in 1987, 
This Louisville, Kentucky-based company is one of the nation's largest Wendy's franchises with 261 outlets throughout Kentucky, Wisconsin, Illinois, Tennessee, and Florida. Nana Inc. also operates 127 Chili's Grill and Bar Restaurants, 23 Golden Corral Buffet and Grill Restaurants, 19 Fazoli's Restaurants, 10 Perkins Restaurants, 8 Mark's Feed Store Restaurants, 5 Blaze Pizza, Napa River Grill, and The Layover Bar. Nana is the sixth Black-owned company with the highest earnings in the U.S., and they are still growing. 7. The Anderson DuBose Company the Anderson DuBose Company is a distributor for more than 270 McDonald's restaurants here in the United States, as well as more than 75 McDonald's restaurants in South Africa. The company purchases about 575 products from approved vendors for distribution to McDonald's franchise owners. Anderson DuBose is the seventh highest earning business to be owned by African Americans in the United States. Warren Anderson co-founded the Anderson DuBose Company with a college friend, Steve DuBose, in 1991. 8. Thompson Hospitality Thompson Hospitality Corporation is the largest minority-owned food and facilities management services corporation in the country and ranks number 8 on our list. Thompson Hospitality was founded in 1992, and he expanded the company's interests into the contract food service arena. Through this alliance, Thompson Hospitality currently serves more than 30 Fortune 100 companies, large colleges and universities, urban school districts, and major hospital centers. Additionally, Thompson Hospitality has developed a specialty niche in providing food service to many of the nation's historically black colleges and universities. 9. Urban One Inc. Urban One is a Silver Springs, Maryland-based media conglomerate founded in 1980 by Kathy Hughes. Urban One is ranked number 9 in terms of annual revenue and earnings for African-American-owned companies. The company primarily operates media properties targeting a black audience, operating 55 radio stations. It is the largest African-American-owned broadcasting company in the United States, operating a variety of syndicated shows with hosts including Tom Joyner, Russ Parr, Yolanda Adams, Ricky Smiley, Bishop T.D. Jakes, D.L. Hughley, and the Reverend Al Sharpton. 10. Millennium Steel Service, LLC Serving automotive plants and parts makers, Millennium Steel Service offers steel processing, warehousing, and logistic services. It also offers warehousing and supply chain management, including inventory management and inspection services, slitting services, and IT system services. In 2001, founder Henry Jackson started Millennium Steel Service as a minority-owned joint venture with Toyota America. Millennium Steel Service is now a Tier 1 raw material supplier to Toyota and rounds off our list at number 10 as the highest earning African-American companies. All right. So we see that we saw now we have top uh, top 10 black businesses. So don't believe the hype about that we don't own anything on you know, all of that because we do. All, now, what we're going to also see today is the 22 habits of the rich so that we can, you know, get our minds set to be in wealthy places. We have to get our minds together so that we can become wealthy. All right. So let's check, take a look at uh, 22 Habits of the Rich. Let's look at that. Let's be clear. We recognize and believe in the maxim that happiness is the measure of true wealth. There is physical wealth, spiritual wealth, lifestyle wealth, and intellectual wealth. However, we produce this video for the audience that's interested in wealth as defined by an abundance of valuable possessions, assets, investments, and money. Intelligence, talent, and charm are great. But more often than not, these aren't what separate the rich from the poor. Instead, the differences are in our daily habits. We each possess a financial blueprint. That is, an internal script that dictates our mentality towards success and wealth. The good news is that we can alter our blueprints through lifelong habits that can be learned and adopted. It's possible to be successful and poor. It's also possible to be rich and a failure. We are not poor shaming. We are simply giving some guidance and recommendations on how to reach the pinnacle of financial success, if you so choose to make that your goal. In this original Black XLS video, we will be featuring the 22 habits of the rich and successful. So without further ado, let's get started. 1. Rich people live within their means Rich people avoid overspending and they absolutely hate debt. The wealthy develop reasonable budgets and stick to them at all costs. 2. Rich people read every day 
Wealthy people tend to believe in the importance of self-improvement and continuing education, and they believe that can be achieved by reading and consuming information. 3. Rich people watch a less than an hour of TV a day. Successful people use their free time engaging in personal development, networking, volunteering, working side jobs, or pursuing goals that will lead to rewards down the road. Rich people simply choose more productive ways to spend their time than watching TV or on social media. 4. Rich people control their emotions and communicate effectively. Successful people subscribe to the notion that not every thought needs to come out of their mouth and not every emotion needs to be expressed. They understand that uncontrollable emotions can destroy both personal and business relationships. They also find value in education in listening to what others have to say. 5. Rich people are very involved in charities. Charity and philanthropy are hallmarks of the wealthy and they understand that you build valuable relationships through them. Successful people tend to be generous with their wealth and love giving back to the community with their money and volunteering time. 6. Rich people network regularly. The wealthy understand that in order to be successful, you must surround yourself with successful people. Whether it's through various social events, club activities, or professional gatherings, rich people find opportunities to network with go-getters, people with drive, and trailblazers. 7. Rich people have a purpose and set goals. For the wealthy, setting specific goals and writing them down is a winning habit that works. These goals are actionable, quantifiable, and very deliberate as the wealthy are dedicated goal setters. Not to mention, they know what they're doing and more importantly, why they're doing it. 8. Rich people value their time. Wealthy people avoid wasting time on non-productive activities and tasks. The wealthy focus on how much they should be earning by the hour and put a priority on their passions. If they are not working towards their goals, they are recharging or spending valuable time with family and loved ones. 9. Rich people keep a daily to-do list. In order to attain wealth, you need to accomplish a number of small goals that feed into the main objective. These baby steps towards success start with a list of action items that's managed on a daily basis. 10. Rich people do not procrastinate. Successful people understand that procrastination impairs quality. It creates dissatisfied employers, customers, or clients. And quite often, it damages personal and business relationships and paints your brand. 11. Rich people work hard and go above and beyond. Wealthy people reject the it's not my job syndrome. They put in countless hours while earning the mutual respect of their colleagues, building their brand, or solidifying the trust of their customers. They work longer, smarter, and harder than everyone else in the room. 12. Rich people avoid toxic people and negativity. We are only as successful as the people we spend the most time with. Thus, successful people limit their exposure to negativity, gossip, and naysayers. Rich people ignore opinions that are not pressured by the mainstream or culture norms. Their laser-sharp focus is on positivity and productivity. 13. Rich people are very persistent and don't give up. Those who are successful have three things in common. Focus, patience, and persistence. They simply do not quit chasing their big goals. 14. Rich people have mentors. Mentors can regularly and actively participate in your growth by teaching you what to do and what not to do. Finding such a teacher is one of the best and least painful ways to learn lessons. Once you have determined your goals, it's best to find someone who has already achieved them and seek guidance with them. 15. Rich people wake up early. Rising early is a powerful path to success. Wealthy people simply do not sleep in because they have too much to accomplish. Some use early morning hours for exercising, meditating, writing in a journal, reading something educational, or getting a head start. 16. Rich people eat healthy and exercise regularly. Coupled with healthy eating, rich people believe in staying fit. They value their health and structure their eating habits accordingly while carving out time to work out. 17. Rich people realize they can't succeed on their own. Wealthy people aren't shy about asking for help when they need answers or assistance when working towards their goals. They tend to lean on a small group of trusted advisors and knowledgeable friends to which they can turn to for information and advice. They are good at forming teams of people who operate well together. 18. Rich people understand money is a long game. The majority of rich people recognize that there is no reliable way to get rich quick. They also believe that almost anyone can get rich slowly if the right things, like saving, are done over a long period of time. 
19. Rich people outsource, outsource, and outsource. Wealthy people are aware of where their skills and talents lie, and they play to their strengths. They also know when it's more economical, time-consuming, and quality-conscious to delegate or hire someone who's much better. Outsourcing and delegating enables you to better utilize your time in another area or at a task that will make more money. 20. Rich people realize the importance of recharging. Successful people do not allow themselves to become overwhelmed. They dedicate time to self-renewal in their physical life, social life, mental life, and spiritual life. This is achieved by exercise and proper nutrition, spending time with family and friends, reading and education, or church and meditation. 21. Rich people have created multiple streams of income. Rich people like to create a hedge against failure and poverty. When one stream suffers, the others come to the rescue. 22. Rich people create their own luck. They act boldly, seizing opportunities where others might hesitate. They have shifted their mindset to accept that mistakes, and sometimes failure, is inevitable. But they treat them as stepping stones to success. They adapt. They evolve. They take calculated risks. They always find a way to reach a better future. Okay. So you see all of these different things are the practices of wealthy, rich and wealthy people. So you can play this over again. And, you know, if there's something in there that you see that you're not doing, you might want to, you know, get in on it uh, because you have to change your mindset so that you can go to other places as far as growing your wealth. It's not going to, it doesn't necessarily happen overnight, but in time and you picking up better habits, those things will help you as well. All right. Today, we only have one missing youth because the other one I had, I just found out. I believe the person probably was found. So, <laughs> excuse me. We're just going to have one for today. Now, her name is Aaliyah Red. She's been missing since August the 8th of 2021. She's from Pleasantville, New York. Uh, she's 15 years old. She's a black female. Her hair color is black. Her eyes are brown. She's about five feet, four inches, and her weight is 100 pounds. So if you know anything, please uh, report her to report it to missing and exploited children and or your local police department so that this young girl can be found and brought back home to her family and loved ones. All right. OK, so now today. Um, our spotlight is going to be on a, a man named William J. Powell. Um, you know, back some time ago, not too long ago, they didn't always want black people to uh, come and be on their golf club, their golf courses. So this gentleman built his own. So let's take a look at the video on from Black Excellence and Abundance. Let's take, take a look at William J. Powell. William J. Powell was an American businessman, entrepreneur, and pioneering golf course owner who designated the Clearview Golf Club, the first integrated golf course, as well as the first to cater to African-American golfers. He was also the first African-American to design, construct, and own a professional golf course in the United States. Powell was the grandson of Alabama slaves and was born in Greenville, Alabama. During his youth, Powell moved with his family to Minerva, Ohio. In high school, he played golf and football. After serving in the United States Army Air Forces in World War II in England, he returned to the Canton, Ohio area near Minerva in 1946 and began work as a janitor and later as a security guard. Due to racial segregation, he was banned from all white public golf courses and was rejected for a bank loan to try to build his own, with financing from two African-American doctors and a loan from his brother. Powell bought a 78-acre dairy farm in East Canton, Ohio, with his wife Marcella did most of the landscaping by hand. Two years later, in 1948, he opened the Integrated Clearview Golf Club. In 1978, he expanded the golf course to 18 holes and earned a National Historic Site designation in 2001. Folks, just imagine that for a moment. Mr. Powell 
did the majority of the landscaping for an 18-hole golf course. This man was very determined, and he proved that when we put our mind to it, we can accomplish anything. He did not let the fact that he was not allowed to go on racially segregated golf courses stop him from creating his own golf course that allowed black people to play on. And his golf course, in fact, was integrated. This is an amazing feat. What Mr. Powell accomplished should be an inspiration to all of us. Never let anyone stop you from pursuing a dream. Not only did he build his own golf course, but he used the land and he taught the neighborhood kids how to play golf for free. Even in the face of segregation, setbacks, and roadblocks, our people find a way to excel in every field. Who emerged as perhaps the greatest golfer of all times? Hmm. There is no doubt that given an opportunity, our people thrive. Not only do we thrive, but we excel and exceed all standards of excellence. Later, at the state's historically African-American Wilberforce University, he played on the golf team. Mr. Powell's daughter, Renee Powell, is a veteran professional golfer. She was the second black golfer to play on the LPGA Tour. Now serving as Clearview's head golf professional, Renee was taught to play golf at a young age by her father. She is also known as one of the top golf instructors in the U.S. His son, Lawrence Larry Powell, presently serves as Clearview's course superintendent. His work has been recognized by both NASA and the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. Powell was inducted into the National Black Golf Hall of Fame. He also received an honorary doctorate of humane letters degree from his alma mater and from Baldwin Wallace College in Berea, Ohio. In 2001, the United States Department of Interior added Clearview Golf Course to the National Registry of Historic Places. Even in the face of racial segregation, Mr. Powell built and maintained his own golf course, 18 courses. We are a truly amazing people. There is absolutely nothing that we cannot accomplish. Although he faced discrimination and segregation when he attempted to play on the white courses, when he built his golf course, it was an integrated course. This is another example of the greatness that lies inside of each and every one of us. And let us know that we can indeed accomplish anything that we put our mind to. Nothing can stop the power of a made up mind. In 2019, the Powell family was named the recipient of the 2019 Old Tom Morris Award by the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America and was honored at the 2019 Golf Industry Show. Powell was also named the recipient of the 2009 PGA Distinguished Service Award 
by the Professional Golfers Association and was honored in conjunction with the 91st PGA Championship. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. So shout out to Mr. William J. Powell. Uh, something as silly as that, uh, where they didn't want us on their courts because of, of our, this color of our skin. Ridiculous. So continue, continue. Hebrew black people, let us continue to build our own. We don't have to be dependent on nobody or feeling bad and all of that. No, but just like when we were back in our own country and our, on our own continent, same thing. If you want it, let's build it. Let's get, like I said, let's continue to get in our communities and build the things that we want. All right. So um, we're going to move on to the health and wellness tips. Uh, get outside. That is something we need to do. Sometimes you're sitting in the house all the time. You don't get outside. You don't breathe the air. You know, sometimes you need to maybe go on nature walks, uh, you know, in the safe areas. I ain't saying go, go where you're going to be, you know, surrounded by uh, cougars and stuff like that. But you know what I mean? There are different areas that have nice little trails and stuff like that. You could go on nature walks and get yourself some nice fresh air. Um, nature walks where people are along those trails and things like that, you know, um, and get out and enjoy the great outdoors, smell the flowers and, you know, see the children outside playing and, you know, the grass and the trees and everything like that, you know, just get out there and enjoy the great outdoors. All right. That will, ha that helps with your health being outside. All right. Uh, another thing we're going to go on to now is the business tips. All right. Now, one of the things I feel that we definitely should have is have customer satisfaction. Make sure that you're finding out if your customers are satisfied. Even ask them if you're one-on-one um, -on -one with them where you see them face-to-face. -face, ask them, what did you like about, you know, shopping here or what do you like about coming to my website? You know, or even email them after they've left your store. Or if you just have whatever you do, if it's just online, email them and thank them and say, you know, I hope you were satisfied. Tell me what you liked about the product or about the service or whatever. Make sure your customers are satisfied because uh, that matters because if they're satisfied, they're going to go on and tell uh, their friends and you know, you're not going to be a secret. They're going to say, hey, you know, go to uh, Crystal's store or her online or, or whatever. They're going to tell other people about you. So always make sure. And if there are things that you need to change about their satisfaction, then, you know, if it's reasonable, because I mean, some people you're not going to be able to please. But, you know, reasonable things you can always change and say, well, you know what? We weren't doing that, but we're going we're gonna to start doing that now. All right, so customer satisfaction, that's a key thing for your business to continue. All right. Okay, so now we are down to the lesson of the day, the word of God that keeps us flowing and going in season and out of season. And we're still talking about the feasts of the Lord. So Shama Yasharala, Ahaya Eloheinu, Ahaya Akkad. Meaning, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. We're about to hear the word of the Lord. We're going to be talking about the Feast of Trumpets. Now, some you have some people you have some who call it Rosh Hashanah, but uh, in the Bible, it's called the Feast of Trumpets. Now. We're going to go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the 23rd through the 32nd verse. So I want to tell you about trumpets. Trumpets are used in the Bible as a warning sound. It's a sound of something is about to happen. Listen up. It's about to happen. 
something is going on. So what I'm going to do, I was going to start you from Leviticus because that's where it comes from. But I want to give you an outline background of trumpets in the Bible, what they stand for. They're a warning sign. They're bringing you to something. So we're going to go to Revelation, the first chapter. And we're going to start at the 10th verse. And uh, I'm going to hit a couple of chapters in Revelation. So you see those there. Now it says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now this is the sound that um, John heard um, when he was receiving this, this book of Revelation. It was brought to him when he was, I believe when he was in Revelation, right? He was on the Isle of Patmos. Okay, and it said to him, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which, which are, are in Asia. So the Lord was telling him, listen up, trumpet sound, right? He was telling him, this is Christ telling him, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, I want you to write in a book. So he first gave him the standstill, standstill, trumpet sound, trumpet sound. This is what's going on. All right. Now let's go to Revelation, the fourth chapter, which is also on the screen. It's, you could just leave it up the, yeah, Revelation, you see there, the fourth chapter in the first verse. It says, after this, I look and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. A warning sign. Something's going on. I need to show you what's going to happen. So John said then, and immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. So he was preparing him to see the throne of the Lord, right? He, he, he sat on the throne. He looked like Jasper and Sarnen stone. And there was a rainbow about his throne in the sight like unto an emerald. So the Lord had to prepare him for that. Listen up. This is what's about to happen. All right. Now, the next uh, chapter that I'm going to bring you to, which is on the screen, which is chapter eight, is the second verse of Revelation, uh, the eighth chapter of Revelation, the second verse. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Seven trumpets. Now we're going to go down to the sixth verse. It says, and the seven angels which had the seven trumpet prepared themselves to sound. Okay? So... The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of trees, the third part of trees. Do y'all see this going on now? Do you really realize what's going on? The earth is under judgment. Do you not understand why you're having all these wild, these uh, forest fires and things like that? It's not because of some crap that they keep telling you. No, this, this world is under judgment, okay? It says, hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up. The third part of trees. Do you see that happening in different parts of the world? Yes. And all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and it and as it were a great mountain, burning with fire, was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. Okay? The second angel sounded, was a great mountain burning with fire. Are we not seeing that with uh, these different uh, mountains that are now blowing up? Okay, these volcanoes erupting. All right, this happened after a trumpet sounded. So the trumpets are sounding, but are you paying attention 
to what's going on. All right. So trumpets are a warning. All right. So now what I'm going to do. All right. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to read a little further because I think I have a little more time than what I thought. All right. So now it says in the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed and then the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters and the name of that star is called wormwood and the third part of waters became wormwood Many men died of the waters, okay, because they were made bitter, all right? Now, I'm going to go as far as the fourth angel. The fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. All right, so I just wanted to give you a display of what trumpets mean. They are a warning, a warning that something is to come. Now, for the Feast of Trumpets, I'm going to take you to where we were told to, uh, to have this feast. And that is in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Okay, the 23rd through the 32nd verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. This is Leviticus 23. If you could put that up, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Uh, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets. All right, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You will do no servile work therein, but you will offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Okay, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. All right, so. The Feast of Trumpets has to do with preparing yourself for the Day of Atonement. What is, what is that? Okay, because the Day of Atonement, which will be the next feast that I'll cover next week, that's going to be the time where you reflect on yourself. All right. What do you need to do to get closer to the Lord, to understand the Lord? to forsake things in you that are not right. What do you need to do to be right with the Most High? So the trumpets are a warning. Get ready because it's time for you to surrender some things. It's time for you to get closer to the Lord. What are you going to have to do to get closer to the Lord? Because as we see the day approaching of the Lord's return, all of these things that are going on, Afghanistan and all that, all of that stuff is prophecy. We're getting closer to the time of Christ or Yeshia, as we call him in the Hebrew. He was never called, uh, here in America, they call him Jesus because, you know, this is a different alphabet and all of that kind of stuff. But he was called Yeshia, meaning salvation. Okay, so... We're getting close to Yeshua, who is the Messiah. We're getting closer to his return. So this year, the Feast of Trumpets, which I believe is going to be celebrated uh, September the, um, the 4th, right? Because, you know, the Sabbath begins Friday night to Saturday evening. So it will be celebrated basically Saturday on September 4th. That's a day of blowing the trumpets. So a lot of Hebrew, you know, churches 
are going to be having that time where they're blowing the trumpets. Why? Because we're sounding the alarm. Get ready for the day of atonement. Get ready to give up your, your wrongdoings for right doings. Get ready to change your mind. Get ready because the Lord is coming. He is soon to come. Everything is lining up what Christ said. Uh, wars, rumors of wars, uh, all the different types of things that are, are coming um, against not just our, of course, against our people, but against um, the different uh, entities that are against the Lord. Okay, we're in a time of judgment. If you're thinking it's anything else, read your Bible. If you even believe part of the Bible, even go to the book of Revelation where I just read to you from. Read from the different prophets. Get a, get a Bible, pull a Bible out and read the different things that were prophesied. Even the things that Christ um, had prophesied, he prophesied in uh, the book of, I want to say the book of Matthew. I believe it's chapter 24, where he had um, told his disciples because they were telling him about how beautiful the temple looked and all of that, you know, and they tell him, oh, it looks beautiful. Yes. And he said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. So you see a lot of false uh, preachers coming and deceiving people, leading them to all this ruin and chaos and stuff like that. So he said that many shall come in his name as what? Christians. He's Christ. They're going to become as if they're down with him, but they, they're not in his company at all. Okay. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. It says, see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet because the end is coming for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. You hear them telling people get the food and all of that kind of stuff. Right. Because why? Famine is coming. So I keep telling you all stock up. Um, I just got a child abduction alert alert just now. OK, um, if you see the New York plate, KFM 2998, that's KFM 2998. If you see that, there's an amber alert out for that person. Child abduction right in the middle of the word of God. <laughs> I mean, you know, so yes, KFM 2998. If you see that that car or whatever, um, please, it's a BMW 530i. A BMW 530i. So if you see that by the time this show is aired, know that it <laughs> they sent me an amber alert right in the middle of my show. All right. So um, if you see that particular car, I'm looking to see if there's anything on there. Um, I guess they don't have all of the special victims squad. Squad. There's a child, Jayla Puelo. Hispanic female of practically seven years old with black hair and brown eyes. She's four foot one inch and 60 pounds. She was last seen wearing pink shirt, black shorts and gray shoes. The suspect, Jean Puelo, Hispanic male, approximately 40 years old, black hair, brown eyes, approximately six feet zero inches, tall, weighing about 160 pounds. Suspect was last seen wearing boxer shorts. OK, so um, the vehicle is a green four door sedan, a BMW 530i with New York license plates like a KFM 2998. If you see that report it to the police, it looks like probably some type of domestic thing. You uh, look like a kidnapping. All right. The child was taken under circumstances that led the police to believe that they are in imminent danger of serious harm and or death. All right. So these are the things that are going on, y'all. These are the last days. 
this is what's going on. This is something. This 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 had to be the Lord to have this happen right in the middle of of, of filming, right? Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in different places. Look at Haiti. All these are the beginning of sorrows. They shall be, deliver you up to be afflicted, shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We're going to be hated of all nations, y'all. We're the people that are hated of all nations. I read to you before in Deuteronomy 28, this was part of the curse because our people would not listen. He said we will be hated of all nations for the sake of Christ. All right. Then shall many be offended, shall betray one another and hate on one another. So betrayal and hate is large in the land. False prophets will rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But the word of God says, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And the end shall come. And the gospel has reached almost every single nation. It's just like a little tiny bit that haven't heard the word of God of the Lord and then shall the end come all right so it says when you therefore see the abomination of dev desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet okay you see things out of order not as they should be let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain it's gonna come a time where we're gonna have to flee to other places because it's about to get worse y'all this is about to ramp up I'm telling you about what's going on with you know the afghanistan thing but there's a whole lot of things that's going on that is going to shake this earth up and we may have we will have to go to different places he said let them be which into judea flee into the mountains we're gonna have to go to other places for refuge all right let him which is on the housetop don't come down to take anything out the house neither let him which is in the field turn back to his clothes and woe be unto them that are with child and them that get stuck in those days. You've seen people now, I saw this morning, taking people's child children from the hospital, just lying on people and saying that their children aren't doing well and all kind of stuff and taking and giving their kids to foster uh, agencies for no reason. Just taking people's kids. You know, so, you know, there's money in that. There's human trafficking. There's, uh, they're, they're taking people's uh, body parts and all kind of crazy stuff. All right. So, you know, we don't know what's coming next. People who have children, be careful. They're trying to steal kids like crazy off the street, just walking up to people, taking their kids. Be careful. And it says, pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day, because as much as we think that we're in a, a country that's safe, okay, in the past, that's how they took us out of, out of where we were in Jerusalem. Uh, they waited till the Sabbath day because they knew that we would be, you know, at ease. So um, it says, pray, pray that your flight won't be in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Right? Okay, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So our, those days of tribulation will be shortened by the return of Christ. But do you know Christ? Are you in the safety zone? Do you have a relationship with the Most High? Have you accepted salvation? Because this time is right upon us. So I urge you, come to know the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. It's not hard. Obey, obeying the, the commandments and, and the ways of the Lord, it's not hard. He, he wants the best for us. So it's better to give up your ways which you've learned from people who don't really basically want to do right a lot of time, do the right thing, 
and let God guide you because you're going to need him to guide you out of this mess that's about to unfold in front of us over the whole world. No one, the tribulation is going to be everywhere. It's, it's already started. You see people killing people for no reason and doing all kinds of things like that. It's everywhere. But if you know the Lord and the pardon of your sins and you stay with the Lord and ask him, you will be a part of the elect. Okay. So thank you for joining the show. Uh, please, please share this video and remember, um, you know, go to my YouTube channel so that you can get the upload right away. All right. You can, you, yes, on the Crystal Jones TV show, subscribe to my channel. That way, as soon as I, um, you know, do a taping, it goes, I upload it that same day, pretty much within the next two days, I, I, I upload it so that people can get the information and know what's going on. All right. So you can watch the show if you want to on Saturdays. You can go to uh, bronxnet.tv, uh, the Inspire channel. Also, uh, the cable channels 951, 2137. Uh, you can watch me on Saturdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Also, YouTube and Facebook. I upload everything there. You could go right there, uh, share my videos. Also, go to HebrewConnect.tv and Patreon. Um, you can go to Instagram and see me. And you can always write to me at the Crystal Jones Show at gmail.com. All right. So thank you all for joining and tuning in with the Crystal Jones Show. Remember, it's the show that's all about balance. We have to be balanced. All right. So Shalom Barakatha. Peace and blessings to you and you and you stay balanced. Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two as sword, MC heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware, didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there. Not getting down with your tactics, undoctrinal practice. Read Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. Well, I've been there. I've been there. But you gotta keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a course online. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me.